What's up YouTube and welcome to another video from ICTO. I'm Colin Prime Moore and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Autopilot. This allows you to do your Windows 10 deployment with ease from the cloud. Coming up. So what is Autopilot? Well, in order for us to firstly understand what Autopilot is, let's look at what people are currently doing in their infrastructures now. Typically, people are taking perfectly good Windows 10 devices, re-imaging them with things like SCCM, with a bespoke image that you're putting together with applications in, drivers, se um, settings in, and you're having to redeploy that out, which can take loads of time and money that the IT department could be better utilised at. This is where Autopilot comes in. Autopilot is a cloud deployment solution that allows you to effectively take an out-of-box experience and turn it into a zero-touch deployment system. So let's take a look at how you do this um, in practice. Autopilot needs three distinct things to make it work. The first step is to register your devices with Autopilot. Now, this is quite a simple thing. It's an, a CSV file that basically contains all of the serial numbers and hardware IDs of the devices you want Autopilot to take. You upload it to a cloud um, portal, and then from then on in, any time those uh, devices ask for deployment, they then come up and auto deployment will detect them and take them through the auto deployment uh, workflow. Once you've got them registered, you then create what's called a deployment profile. Deployment profile is basically tells the machine what to do when it comes up for auto deployment. So it will skip things like the end user license agreement, Cortana settings, the privacy settings, uh, how to set up the user, what the name of the machine is, and we'll show you that in a little bit, uh, little bit later. The third bit is to effectively ship the device to the user. Now, this can actually come from either the distributor or the hardware vendor directly. No longer does the IT department actually need to touch the device before it goes to the end user. So now what the end user is de um, delivered is a sealed box. Out of the box comes this um, nice cellophane wrapped device, and then they basically turn it on, power it up, and off it goes auto deploying. And again, we'll show you that in the next uh, section. So what does the user actually see? So upon uh, receiving their device, which is actually could be still sealed in its box, they unbox it, they power it on, join it to a network, and since Windows 10 Creator Edition, uh, they've been able to do captive portals as well, join it to the network, Autopilot will then detect it coming up onto the network and take care of the rest, including being able to Azure AD join, being able to auto encrypt, enroll it into enterprise mobility management, things like uh, Intune, and then effectively start deploying the policies and applications automatically. Autopilot also allows you to pre-register the device to a user, which means then that when they get it out of the box, they're greeted with a familiar message, a business corporate message that actually contains their personal details. So they don't even have to put in any information, just simply their password and any authentication process, and off it goes. So let's go over to the computer now and show you how all of this is done. So what we can do, first of all, is you can run it from the Windows Store for Business, or you can run it from directly in from Intune. The two are actually working together. So you don't need Intune to do this, but it does help. You'll see later on how Intune can integrate with this. What we can do from here though, is we can register all of our devices. So we've got some of our devices sitting in um, here already. You can assign it a, a deployment profile and assign it um, the, uh, the settings that you want to from in here. However, what we're gonna do is concentrate on what Intune is offering us here as well. So within Intune, if you go into the device enrollment and then go to Windows enrollment, you'll see that we've also now got Windows auto deployment settings in here. So if we go into the deployment profiles, we'll give you a quick look. There are two types. There is a standard one, which is where it gets assigned to a user 
or a self-deploying one. So that might be a device that you want to auto-deploy that you're not ready to give an assign to a user. It's also very useful for things like kiosk mode as well, where effectively the device doesn't have a user, it auto-locks on and app locks in. So again, being controlled by autopilot, still cloud-ready stuff, auto-deployment now works for things like kiosks. So let's have a quick look at the standard profiles in here. So we can see in the settings, these are the sort of things that you will be using um, in auto deployment. So it will skip things like the, um, whether it's a personal computer or a corporate one, we know it's a corporate one because it's registered into autopilot. It will skip the OEM registration stuff, any of the Cortana stuff, the OneDrive stuff, um, and most of that OOBE stuff, the out of box experience stuff that you're used to seeing. We can then also sort of say that uh, we want to hide some of the account options stuff. We want to uh, set up a uh, whether the user is an administrator of the local machine or whether it's a standard user of the machine. Um, this is very useful because you don't necessarily want them to be full-blown administrators. You might want to restrict that down. And again, we can do that. If you think of manually deploying out a machine, um, typically when you're setting up one, the first account tends to become the administrator. With out-of-box experience, with autopilot, that's not the case. You can actually have a standard-only user on these devices. Remember, they are um, Azure AD joined, so you can process Elevate if required. Um, just a note on this, though, that anyone that's a global admin in your 365 will automatically become administrator because they need administration roles for other things. We can also then now, a uh, new feature to Autopilot is give it a computer name. So matching to your naming conventions that you might have in there, we can actually give it a computer name as well with some uh, the random digits as well. So it conforms to your naming conventions. We can then also assign the devices out. Um, so these are the ones that are assigned to this uh, deployment profile. And we can also uh, tell it which type of devices that uh, we want in here. Now, also what you can now do is, is you can also elect this profile to, be to before the, become the default profile for autopilot as well. So any devices that come on that aren't necessarily autopilot enabled will automatically, as part of the enrollment process, even if they're being done manually, will then be put into this autopilot um, profile for you automatically. So if they then come along and do an autopilot uh, enroll again, then they get this profile by default. So that's the, the profiles for you. Um, you can then say we can auto assign these out. So if I pick a device here, you can see that it's been assigned out to me as a user. So now if I was to go through an autopilot um, in ro a rollout or a reset of this device, this device will know A, that it's joined to my organization, but also it's assigned to myself. So where I then go to um, put in my username and password, the username is already pre-filled out and it gives me a friendly message to say that it's, desi it's um, destined for me as this device. So if we have a quick look at all of this, that is effectively how the um, autopilot is set up. Very simple, it's just a list of user, uh, list of devices and a list of profiles that they are assigned to and the users are assigned to as well, which means then that we can, as users are reset or if people get things out of the box, this is the, these are the profiles that they are given automatically. No user intervention from IT. IT effectively are hands off. This is all done automatically in the background for users. So how does this look from the end user's perspective? Well, it's very familiar actually. Uh, when you get a Windows 10 device out of the box, the actual startup experience now is very user friendly. So all it's gonna ask the end user for is some key questions in order to get the machine online. So first of all, it's gonna ask for things like language, then it's gonna ask for the keyboard layout. Once it's done that, it will then go through a couple of um, restarts and then start going through the network process. Once it's sitting on the network, it will then come up and ask for your username and password. Now, if we've pre-assigned the, uh, the user to the device, um, Autopilot is going to be able to say, hang on, I already know who the user is for this, so I'm gonna even skip the username uh, part and just ask for the user's password. So once it comes up, it comes up with a familiar branded um, interface that the user uh, should be familiar with. It will be branded with the company's name, the company logo, but also they should see their email address or their username being displayed so they know that the device is for them. All they've then got to simply do is put their username and password 
into the field. If you've got things like multi-factor authentication uh, set up, so Azure um, MFA set up, it will prompt them on their phone to go and uh, put the uh, enrollment key uh, code in. Uh, and again, giving you that extra security that not everyone can do this. Um, you can actually put a stipulation in to say that MFA only people can do this, only certain people are allowed to do this, but it gives them the extra um, security that's required, otherwise everyone will be able to join their machines to the domain. So once it's done that, um, effectively then, Autopilot goes and takes over. So what Autopilot then does is it's going through and checking all of your security on your hardware, it's, it's Azure AD joining, it's going to an auto encrypt if the machine supports um, auto encryption, so auto BitLocker encryption, whilst storing that BitLocker key in Azure AD as well. Um, once it's gone through all of that and got it and updated, it will then go through the Intune enrollment. Now, again, you don't have to Intune enroll, but this is the bit that makes the end user experience very seamless. It means that the end user effectively will be given a fully managed device. It will be a fully maintained device, fully patched, with all of the policies, all the security, all of the applications and uh, data that they require on the device. So this takes a little bit of time. Now, again, as part of some of the um, recent updates, they've now put this um, splash screen up and you can say to, uh, you can say in the administration part whether you show this or whether you allow the user to effectively carry on working. Now we've got it set here that um, it won't go past this screen until it's fully set up. The reason for that is um, some users might be a little bit sort of, um, uh, a little bit sort of quick with it get to the desktop and wonder where all their applications are and the applications haven't yet been um, pushed down. So it is very useful for those users that you might think actually getting them to the desktop early and allowing them to get online if you're using online apps a lot rather than fully installed apps, that might be a preferred mechanism to you. But actually this mechanism here is a much, more, uh, is a much better uh, system for those users that aren't familiar with what's going on. They will see progress through the uh, menu structures that are there but will prevent them seeing it until the applications are fully installed. Now the machine might go through a couple of reboots. Um, it needs to for things like the network settings. Some of the applications might need a restart. And then once it's uh, gone through those reboots, it will then go through the customization settings. So if you've got things like um, desktop uh, wallpaper that needs to be set, or some of the customization colors um, that are being set in there, or any PowerShell commands that you might want to run, again, this is where the reboot will happen and effectively it logs on to the machine. So again, you, the user might be waiting a little bit of time for this, but once they are presented with the uh, desktop, the desktop is effectively fully configured and fully managed, where, ready for them to utilize with all of their applications sitting on it. So once we have gone through all of that, again, um, if you've got it set, and this is where it's very useful for the, um, uh, for the Intune part of it, is it will go through again the Windows Hello stuff as well. So it will set up all the biometrics. If you're lucky enough to have uh, the Face ID stuff, it will go through all of that as well. Set up the pin codes, all of those sort of things to again further secure the device as part of this workflow process. So once we have gone through all of that uh, setup and the user is presented with their desktop, now what we'll go through is some of the um, things that post logon. So some of the things that might be is customization of the screens, so, uh, the wallpaper, and some of the PowerShell commands because PowerShell has now recently supported Intune. Again, this is why Autopilot works really well when you attach it to um, using Intune with it as well. So <clears throat> what we're gonna also see in our demonstration here is the ability to now start running PowerShell commands. So these are very useful for all the things that aren't yet quite supported in the interface for Intune, so some of the policies, some of the settings, some of the customizations you might want to do inside Windows 10 as part of your enterprise um, configuration, we can now do through the Intune portal using the PowerShell commands. So again, what we've got here is, um, I've got a little prompt up here to basically say that uh, I am running uh, some PowerShell commands in there, it's just a visual for me to see. But what I've also got is I've been able to set up things like the OneDrive automatically configuring itself with the user's stuff. So using the ADAL uh, functionality or the modern authentication side of things to be able to set up OneDrive, 
um, do the files on demand, do the known folder, um, move stuff as well. So all of the my documents, all the pictures, uh, the desktop automatically re uh, get redirected into OneDrive. If they've already got those redirected, again, the script will put those settings in place and then you'll start noticing that the desktop uh, documents automatically start synchronizing in. So if we take a look at that now, what we'll see is we know that the PowerShell commands are running in the background uh, for this because we've had that prompt. They do take a little bit of time to run, um, but once we start seeing them, um, come in, you'll then start seeing the configuration of uh, OneDrive come in. What you'll start seeing is those configuration changes that we've made inside PowerShell are now being adopted by OneDrive. So as OneDrive comes up, you'll see that the interface slightly changes on the uh, device. We're now synchronizing. It's now pulling um, the data down that's needed. Um, we've now got a friendly uh, message for the end user to see. Um, that says that they're now syncing with our OneDrive. The user hasn't had to do any user intervention at this point. OneDrive is automatically setting itself back up based on the policies, based on what we've had um, done in those PowerShell commands. So as you'll see, uh, the documents are starting to synchronize back down. Um, what you'll also start seeing as part of this process is that known folder move will also start uh, synchronizing as well. So known folder move is the notion of documents, desktop and pictures out of the local user also being redirected and synchronized with OneDrive as well. So as you start seeing this um, populate, you start seeing the documents come onto the, uh, the desktop there and then everything that's um, in the documents folder is now redirected over. Again, very, uh, very seamless to the end user, fully automated, the user hasn't had to do anything to get this setting back up. So you can see the power of what Autopilot is doing here. That coupled with Intune as well gives a fully automated deployment system for a cloud environment. So when you are looking to deploy Windows 10, even your existing ones, you can put your existing machines as a simple PowerShell command to uh, run on your network to find all your existing serial numbers of your devices. Once you've got all of those in Autopilot, Anytime someone resets a machine now, an end user can even reset their own machine. So this is user empowerment. An end user can go and reset their machine, run through the autopilot process without any intervention from IT at all. So effectively, they can reset their own machine. They can bring it back if there's any faults with it for any reason, or they can be guided through it easily with IT on the end of a phone. That device hasn't got to come back into the building now to have, have usual sort of, you know, put Windows 10 on it again, wipe it, start again, all of that sort of stuff. So again, very powerful, very useful for remote offices, very good for um, sort of the road warriors, the salespeople out on the road all the time, very useful in those sort of scenarios. Um, and something I use all the time uh, now is, is autopilot with all the devices that we have here um, and very useful for other businesses that I've been into where they've seen the power of giving that user, uh, user empowerment, giving the user the ability to manage and maintain and effectively become their own first line of support. So guys, I hope you found that very useful. Um, if you have any questions, please do post them down in the comments section below. Uh, please remember to like this video if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't like it, um, and please subscribe and hit that notification icon. It really does help us out here um, for any new subscribers we've got. Um, if you've got any other questions or if you'd like to see us um, do anything else, with regards to Intune or Autopilot or Azure AD Join, Windows 10, anything like that, please put it in the comment sections below. Uh, but for now, I've been Colin Primore for ICTO. See you in the next one.